Hey everyone, and welcome to the midweek service. We're so happy that you're tuning in. My name is Andrew, and hey, can you do me a favor? In the chat box below, why don't you type hello and let me know where you're from. Also, hit share. We have this amazing opportunity to share this life-giving service all across the world, changing lives. Well, before we go into the message, we have praise and worship. So let's sing our hearts out and worship our God.
The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. for me. 
to redemption by the grace in his eyes if his grace is an ocean we're all sinking so heavenly turned like an unforeseen kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves He loves Yeah, He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves He loves us Oh, how, how He loves us Oh, how, how He loves us Oh, how He loves He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how, how He loves us Oh, how He loves around these walls I thought by now they fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your is my confidence you never failed me yet I know the night won't last your word will come to pass my heart will sing your praise again. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faith.
stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never fail me yet Oh, you never fail me yet And I never forget that you never failed me yet and I never will forget we just want to take some time and encourage you with some testimonies some stories that have been shared with us from people just like you from all across the world all across our Springs locations this first one says thank you so much for praying and believing with us over our two sons and their new school year for the right friends and a shield over them from the fearful COVID talk my son is feeling peace in his school coming home happy and like his usual self and his brother has made two good friend connections, one of whom did a class presentation today on Jesus, his word and his saving grace message. When the students were asked to share about someone who has made a difference in the world, he chose Jesus. So grateful for another friend in his life with the same faith, so, so special. All the glory to God and thank you Springs Church family so much. Awesome, so great hearing testimonies about our kids. And this last one says, my husband and I had been trying to get pregnant for several years with no success. It was becoming discouraging, but we refused to stop trusting God. We went to a worship and miracles event in Calgary at the beginning of the year with the intention of receiving prayer to have a baby. During the service, Pastor Leon asked any married couple who's having trouble getting pregnant to come up for prayer. We went up for prayer and accepted some great wisdom from Pastor Leon on how to stay in faith. Well, only a few short months later, we found out we were expecting. We are now 15 weeks pregnant and couldn't be more excited. Thank you, Jesus. So, so awesome to hear these testimonies because what God does for one person, He does for all. God doesn't have favorites. His promises are for every believer. And we just want to take a moment and pray with you and believe with you for whatever it is that you are trusting God in this season. Whatever it is you're facing, maybe there's you don't know where to find the answers, we're going to pray right now together. Because just as we sang, when there isn't a way, He always makes a way. And so, dear God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have the answers, that your promises in Jesus are yes and amen to every believer. And your word says that as we believe on him, as we trust in him, that all things become possible. Nothing's too big, nothing's too small. And so we thank you for your life, your abundant life that flows through each of us. We thank you for wisdom to uh, weather the storm in every circumstance, no matter what we're facing, God, that your wisdom prevails. We thank you for your strength that rises up in us when we feel weak. We are strong, as your word says. We say that we are strong. God, we thank you for provision and favor as we're walking through situations with job and income and debt. God, we thank you for favor and provision. We thank you that you give us wealth. We thank you for relationships. God, that your desire is that they thrive and they flourish and so we just speak health, we speak love to come in and mend broken hearts, to bring people together. We thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. We thank you, God, that every person under the sound of my voice you love, you came for, you have a way for them. And so we put our trust in you today, knowing that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask, think, or imagine, as your word says. And in, in Jesus' mighty name, we believe this. Would you say amen and amen? You know, there's something amazing and powerful about worship, that when you focus and magnify on God and His promises, your problems seem smaller. 
as you invite God's miraculous power into your life. Well, we want to hear from you. Whatever it is that you're going through, we want to stand in agreement and believe with you. You can send us your prayer request, connect with us, send us an email at prayerandpraise at springschurch.com. Well, before we head into the message, I want to share with you a little bit about our church. Our culture is something that we like to call laugh. We spell it L-A-F, but we call it laugh on purpose. We believe that life is meant to be enjoyed. Jesus said it best himself in John 10, 10. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. And our culture of laugh, L stands for love. We believe in loving and valuing people, no matter how different they are to us or what they believe in. A stands for acceptance. You know, no matter what it is that you've been through, we accept you as you are, as messed up or as perfect as you think you are. And lastly, F, which stands for forgive. But when you choose to forgive, you choose the path of freedom and truly receiving God's best. And also we believe in something that we like to call spirit contemporary, which is we believe in the presence of God and, and the message of Jesus. But how we deliver that message, how we share Jesus to the people in our lives has to be in a way that is not cringeworthy, but has to be done in a way that attracts people to want to know more about the Jesus that we love and the Jesus that we serve. Well, we're going to jump right into tonight's message. I hope you're as, as excited as I am. Let's get ready for the word and welcome our speaker. Hey everybody, welcome to the midweek. We are so glad that you guys are joining us this evening. Uh, we're just continue to be excited to bring the word of God to you every single Wednesday and every single Sunday. You know, as Pastor Leon shares the word and as myself and some others share the word, we're just so pumped. And we believe that this word is gonna help change your life. It's gonna be able to help bring some wisdom and guidance, but ultimately it's gonna help you guys get to know Jesus. And I pray that Jesus is revealed continually through this. So, hey, wherever you guys are watching from, again, a massive hello. My name is David. I'm one of uh, Leon Fontaine's associate pastors here at Springs Church, and it's an honor and privilege to be able to talk to you guys again. Um, I just want to say, hey, wherever you're watching from, doesn't matter if you're overseas, doesn't matter if you're local or if you're in the United States or whatever country you may be from, a huge welcome to you guys. We believe you're a part of this church, a part of this church that's reaching people all around the world. Go ahead, type in the comments, where are you watching from? I love being able to see where people are tuning in from. As well, uh, if you guys could do me a big favor, if you go ahead and hit share, or if you're right now, if you're on Facebook or, or YouTube, go ahead and hit the like button as well. That helps us get this message out to all the people that you have influence over. It helps us get the message out to people that need to hear about Jesus. And I believe that Holy Spirit's gonna guide people to this word as he guides my words this morning. But this morning I'm excited to bring the word to you. We're gonna dive right in. I'm gonna be talking about the paradox of Jesus. <laughs> the paradox of Jesus. Now, that may seem like a bit of a, a funny statement, but I'm gonna get into it and explain why there is this paradox around Jesus. And that's the title of the message. But first, before we dive into the actual message, we're gonna read uh, from a couple scriptures. Today I'm basing the scriptures and our message off of two verses, and one of them is gonna be in Romans chapter 14. It's gonna be reading in Romans 14, verse 17. That's gonna be the first place we go to. So let's read here. I'm gonna start in chapter 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking. See, notice the kingdom of God. We're going to dive into that and what that means. But it is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy. Whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue. Notice the word pursue. That invokes an action on our part. So that let us then pursue what makes for peaceful and mutual upbuilding. That's our first verse. The second verse we're going to be reading here is in John 10.10. 10. I'm sure most of you guys know this one. And what this is says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Je this is Jesus speaking. Jesus says, I come that you may have life and that you may have it more 
abundantly. See, now this life isn't just talking about eternity. It's not just talking about endlessness. It is the sozo type of life, which means now. Here in the present life, it means our quality of life, your quality of life, will continue to get better as we pursue Jesus until that day that it is perfected when our relationship with God is complete in heaven. And that's two things we're going to dive into today. If you believe that, go ahead and type amen. But before we dive into the word, let's pray together. Father, We come before you in Jesus' name. We just thank you so much for your love. We thank you for who you are in our life, God. We thank you that we can trust you and that we can trust your word, God. Holy Spirit, guide my my words. Thank you that you're working on people's hearts, wherever they may be. God, we set aside all the distractions. We set aside all the things that might be pushing our mind. And we are tuning into your word. We're tuning into your heart, God. And help us to reconnect with you so that we can know Jesus better and we can pursue and have this sozo life here and as we continue on. In the mighty name of Jesus, everyone in agreement typed amen and amen. Go ahead and type amen. I just want to open up and and just say there, you know, I've got a bunch of uh, brothers. I've married into a family that's got, I've got now four added brother-in-laws on top of my other two actual brothers. I got a lot of bros in my life and it is an awesome thing to have brothers in your life. If you've got a good set of friends or actual brothers or brother-in-laws, you will know what I'm talking about when it's a blessing. Like they're the type of bros that you can make fun of all the time and to each other and in front of your faces and it's like an expression of love. (laughs) It's like you can go and have this jostling and this camaraderie and you're there to build each other up and you know they've always got your back and that is just kind of what the brotherhood that I feel like I've not only got with my brothers but the brotherhood that I've married into as well and and truly can say they're they're my closest friends and I'm so pumped for that and we often go and see movies with each other. I don't know if you guys are, it's actually been a while since I've been in the theater but when we go see movies you notice how people have got a different type of personality when they're in the theater. It's like this alter ego comes over them when they're watching a movie. I've got this one brother who absolutely, I I would call him the obnoxious movie watcher. Like he's that guy that is just unaware of how loud his voice is, like in the quiet scenes when there is like this, 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 this part of the movie that everyone is just leaning in their seats and they're waiting to see what happens. You have this, bro- this one brother who literally cracks open a can and starts ruffling his chips and he starts talking like, what's going on? And he's a complete distraction. He's the obnoxious movie goer. Then you've also got, I, I've got this one brother who is just, he loves like almost every single movie he sees. Like every movie is awesome. Every movie is, oh, he walks out, best movie I've ever seen, and he's probably just talking about the last couple of days because it's the only movie he's seen in the last couple of days, but that is one of my other brothers. He just loves almost every single movie he sees, and, and, and that, I think that's a good thing, is that, but at the same time, when you ask him, hey, was that movie awesome? He's going to say, it was awesome, <laughs> and then you realize you see it, and oh, it's really a crappy movie. That's, that's another personality. The guys who love every single movie. One of the other ones is one of the other one of my brothers is simply, he just loves to like share, actually, I, maybe this isn't one of my brothers, but I can definitely know one of my sister-in-laws who's like this. They love to share every single moment of the movie with you. Like, you know when you're watching a movie and, and you're in tune with the storyline and you're in tune, like when you're in tune with the characters and you're watching and you have a person beside you that wants to talk through like every single moment, so it's kind of like a split distraction. Do you guys know anybody like that? who loves sharing every moment of the movie. Well, I've got someone like that in my life. I've also got somebody um, who's just an extreme critic of movies, and they only think movies are good if they're like that extreme artsy-fartsy type that doesn't make any sense. Do you guys know anybody like that? Where it's like the movie, yeah, it was interesting, but I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> or did that mean something? Is it, it's, it's like this... The, the, it's like this type of feeling that you, you can't express. It's just a weird movie, and I have a friend who just like loves that kind of movie. As well, I've also got a friend who is, or I've got a brother who's an extreme realist. If you guys, do you guys know these people? Where like every comment they say, yeah, right, that's, that's not going to happen. And we, we were sitting in a movie, and we are sitting in one of the uh, Marvel movies, I believe it was the, the Avengers, and you have this awesome scene where you have Spider-Man flipping through 
and he catches a car and saves somebody from, from an obvious death. He catches and stops this 3,000-pound vehicle hurtling towards him. And my, my brother-in-law goes, yeah, right. <laughs> That's, that wouldn't happen. It's like, we're in a Marvel movie. You know this is like complete fiction. You guys have friends like that who's like the extreme realist? There's all these different personalities. And, and when we were in this Avengers and we're in this Avengers movie watching, it started to make me think of of potential. It started to make me think of these superheroes when this, my brother or my, my buddy said that, hey, that's not possible. It started to make me think of, okay, well, that guy's got the potential. Yes, it's a fiction world, but we're sucked into this fiction world of make-believe to make it feel like it's real and it's actually happening. And these guys have got such, so much built-up potential that they are utilizing in their life. These are the movie characters we're talking about. And I started asking, what happens if these guys who are blessed with different gifts and abilities, what happens if they don't walk out their potential? What happens if they don't pursue their potential? What happens if they decide, you know what, I'm just going to let this thing evolve on its own and we'll see what happens. Like these guys would not be the superheroes that they were supposed to be. These would not be the ones that would come out and save the day, operate in all these amazing things that they can operate, help save the world from attacks from outside of the universe, all these different things that they were able to build up on their own. What would happen if they didn't pursue their potential? And when I started thinking of that, really started to hit me on the inside about how myself as a Christian, there's been times in my life, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate to this, and there's a lot of people I know in the world who are probably in this category, who have got this amazing potential built up inside of them because of their belief in Jesus, but they are not pursuing that potential. They are not walking out their potential. They have just kind of left it, and whatever happens, happens. What a waste of potential, in my opinion. What a waste of, of this God-given ability and right that we can have in our life, but us as Christians aren't pursuing it. So a question I ask myself is, and I think we all should ask ourselves this question, is am I pursuing this potential? Now, let's clarify what potential is. Potential, in my estimation, is when we give our life to Jesus and we believe on him, that is step one down the path of our potential. You see, as I read in, in, in Romans here, in Romans 14, it says the kingdom of heaven is not eat or drink. It is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy. It also says in John 10.10, Jesus says, I have come so that you may have life. Now, it's not just referring to salvation and eternity. It is referring to sozo, quality of life. It is referring to a type of life where our quality can continue to get better and better and better, not just for the sake of us being better, but for the sake that we can help other people experience freedom, experience life, experience peace, experience joy through Jesus by us building that relationship with Jesus. That is how I would define if we are our potential with Jesus is that this, this idea that we do not stop at just receiving him as our Lord and Savior, but we actually pursue, as it says here in, in, in Romans 14 and verse 18, it says that we pursue him, is that we pursue this relationship. And see, this is so vital in our life because the paradox of Jesus, and as my title says, the paradox of Jesus is, is something that not a lot of us think of, but we have this idea almost like if you ever seen the movie The Matrix, it's almost like the red, the red pill, blue pill idea. It's like well, when we hear about Jesus and we hear about all he has to offer and we hear about the problems or we know about the problems that we're having in our life, we kind of hear this thing, Jesus is the answer. And it's a beautiful statement. It can absolutely be true, but it also could not be true. See, we might have this idea that all I got to do is pop this this pill, this magic Jesus pill, give my life to him, and my life is now good. My life is now ready to roll. Um, my life is going to change. I'm talking about my life here on earth. All these problems go away. How many Christians have given their life expecting that, but then not seeing those results? Not seeing all those things come to fruition. See, that would be the paradox of Jesus. Because Jesus the, is the answer is 
true or it's not true. What it's dependent upon is what you actually believe about when you say Jesus is the answer. See, you may say Jesus is the answer, but have no corresponding trust in who he is or what he says he is or who, what he can do for you or all the things that he has won for you by going through the cross. See, if you don't have that belief and trust in what he's done, then you're never going to experience the, and, and realize what Jesus can do for you. It's going to stay on a level that is simply Jesus has secured salvation. You may believe in him, you may have eternity, but you're not going to experience that sozo quality of life that he wants us to walk into. It says, he says, I have come that you may have life. He desires for you to have life. So my question is, first of all, are you seeing your, so you have this belief in Jesus You have this belief in Jesus, but are you seeing the corresponding results of what you expected? It's an important question to ask. So you got to answer yourself honestly, yes, maybe in some areas, no, maybe in a lot of areas. Whatever your answer is, it's going to be determined upon your belief and what you believe and what Jesus has done and who God is. See, the whole thing about pursuing God, the whole thing about walking out this relationship with God, this whole thing about experiencing this sozo life here on earth, I'm not talking about salvation. We're past the point of salvation. We're moving on to, if, if salvation is step one, we're now moving into step two and going forward from there. See, you have to have an ability to trust. Trust is not just some weak, flippy floppy word. Trust shouldn't be a diluted word. If I ask you a question, because I'm talking to you through the screen, wherever you may be, you might be in Ohio, you might be in the United Kingdom, you might be in Nigeria, you might be in South America somewhere. I am a stranger to you. If I asked you, do you trust me? The answer should be no. That sounds kind of crazy. If I'm talking the word and you're watching, but the reason why it should be no is because you don't know me personally. I haven't built a track, maybe I've built a track record with you on the screen where I preach the word of God. You might trust me when I go and preach the word of God. But even on that note, you should not take my word for it. You should still dive into the word and check every single thing I'm saying so that you are getting the direct download from God's word to yourself. But if I ask you, do you trust me in life? Your answer should be no, because you don't know me. You don't have a relationship with me. You don't have, you don't know my words. I haven't had an opportunity to uh, express myself to you. You don't know my thoughts, my opinions, my stances. You don't know my reactions. You haven't seen me in tough times. You haven't seen me in good times. All these things that go into trusting somebody come out of relationship. So if you ask my wife, hey, Danielle, do you trust David? Her answer would be, 100% I trust him. Why? Because she knows me. She's seen me through thick and thin. She asks me questions. We talk about what we feel. We go back and forth and we do life together. So we've built this connection of trust. And unfortunately, too many Christians hear the beautiful nature of what, who God is, They love the idea of what Jesus has done for us. They love the idea that Jesus is the answer, that Jesus brings salvation, that Jesus has the potential to help. We've got the potential to be helped by Jesus. All of these things, but we don't take the next step to actually develop a trust with him. See, salvation and choosing to believe in Jesus, as the Bible says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, does not mean that you've automatically built a relationship with him. It means you've established a connection. It means that you are now righteous in the eyes of God. It means that you now have this connection with God. But now we, as a people, we have to go ahead and take the next step in actually building that trust. So the question I would ask you is, Do you trust God? And if you say yes, ask yourself the next question. What am I doing to show that I trust him? Do I know him? Do I know his character? Do I know what he believes? Do I know God's opinions? Do I know God's thoughts? Do I go back and forth and talk with him? You see, in every relationship, there is this self-revealing that happens. See, right behind this camera is one of my good friends named Kyle. For us to build a relationship, I cannot enforce on Kyle what I want him to be. 
I can't say, Kyle, you are this, you are that, you are this, you should believe this, I want you to think this. That's not how a relationship works. I give Kyle the opportunity to reveal himself to me by conversations, he lets me know what he thinks, we talk things through, we hang out. That is how a relationship is built. So if a lot of us, I think, we like the idea of trusting God, but we actually haven't thought deeply about are we actually building that relationship to have true trust in him. A question that might be interesting to handle is I've asked, often been asked a question by, by people as a pastor, how come miracles don't happen? How come certain things, I pray to God, the word says this, and I went and I asked God and it didn't happen. I was disappointed. What, what's going on? I would say more often than not, and probably in most cases, is the circumstances that that person was facing was greater than their ability to trust in God. That's probably the reason why a majority of things don't happen. It's not because God didn't do. See, Jesus has already provided us the opportunity. Jesus has already guaranteed us his blessings, his life, his sozo life. And not only that, he has provided us the path to that. But if we're not the ones who are walking out that path, if we're not the ones that are going down that path and actually building a relationship with God, learning to trust him. Now, please hear me. I'm going to ramp on this one more time. Is that it might feel nice to say that we trust God. We might prop our collar up and we want our friends to know we want to make ourselves feel good. Yeah, of course I trust God. Because it sounds good. It sounds culturally appropriate if you're a Christian or a religious person. It sounds great. But at the end of the day, if we're not building that relationship with God where we actually have real trust. I'm talking about not some flimsy trust. I'm talking about the trust that you have where you can say to a buddy, hey, meet me on the rooftop of this building at 3 a.m., and you know he's going to be there. That's the type of trust. Or, hey, I want you to fall off the back of this chair because I am going to catch you. And if I don't catch you, you're going to get a lot of hurt. You're going to get really hurt. That's the type of trust I'm talking about. Is that do you actually have a real trust in who God is, who he says he is, and what is encompassed in life with him? Don't deceive yourself. Ask yourself the question, are you pursuing that relationship? Because too often, the word we hear, the Bible when we dive into God's word, or if we aren't diving into God's word, but we hear things from our favorite pastor, our favorite preacher, that word will not benefit you unless you put it to work. You got to put the word to work. You know, it was an, if, I mentioned the movie The Matrix earlier. You saw Neo as he took this pill. Let's pretend that's the Jesus pill. He took this pill, which transformed him into this new world, this new way of thinking, this new potential. But you notice that Neo hadn't just arrived and everything was perfect. He had to put in the work. He had to build. He had to train. He had to go and do all these things to actually access the potential, to pull in the potential. And that's the Christian faith. You know, religion has tainted so much of the Christian faith that we've replaced building a relationship with God for tradition and knowledge that literally just sits in our head and doesn't do us any good. If we fall into that category, man, we are missing out on so much potential of so-so life. You know, most Christians tend to believe that Jesus is sufficient for all your problems, and he is. He is, absolutely. I'm not taking anything away from what Jesus has done. But there is is a part that you have to play to walk out. I'm wondering, are you doing the part that you need to do? My whole goal and my whole heart of this message is simply, I hope that I can help empower you. I can help make you realize and see that us as Christians, our world would be different if people pursued a relationship with God and didn't just stop at salvation and knowledge in our head. See, Jesus provided the promise and the path to the promises. We've just got to go ahead and do the work. And if we're not careful, tradition, even culture, even the things around us can neutralize the word of God in our life. But we got to put in the work. We got to build that trust with God. Because the kingdom of God, anytime the Bible talks about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, it's talking about this new realm that we enter in now. It's funny, I was having this thought just before we started uh, filming and and doing all this. And I think that 
We live in a world where there's a lot of different drug, drugs of choice, really. People anesthetize themselves with different things, whether it's uh, food, whether it's an actual drug or an actual narcotic, whether it's marijuana, it's now legalized here in Canada, whether it's alcohol, whether it's monotonously staring at your phone, flipping through Instagram because we're addicted to it and it's a way to escape, right? There's all these different drugs of choices that is neutralizing our brains and our hearts and really being a distraction. And honestly, for a lot of Christians, for a lot of Christians in the world, I feel that the drug of choice for a lot of Christianity has been comfort. Has been comfort. Has been complacent Christianity. Has been, what's in it for me? Well, what's going on? Uh, what can you do for me? What can the Bible do for me? What can church do for me? It's an, it's an interesting but scary thought at the same time because if we aren't careful or or if we don't realize what this is doing to ourselves, is that can lead us to a place where we are just a nominal Christian, never experienced the life of God, the sozo life that can not only bring beautiful freedom to our lives and God's peace and God's joy, but it stops us from being effective to reaching other people with the same thing. You know, I'll prove it to you. Our culture grooms us to be comfortable. We want Food as fast as we can get it, right? We want our men and we want our women easy. We want to lose 30 pounds like in 30 days, right? We, we want fame overnight. Everyone's pursuing the, the Instagram fame. If I can just build up my profile and become famous, right? People want the cheat sheets instead of an actual book and doing the work. We want handouts over hard work. A lot of people want welfare over an actual job, right? These are all comfort items. I think a lot of Christians want God's promises without God's actual processes going through them. See, faith without works is dead. Wherever you are at, my whole, whole thing for you today is to ask yourself a serious question. Have I developed a trust, a real hardcore trust with God? That means, do you know him? Do you know his word? The Bible, the Word of God, is His way of revealing Himself to you. Everything you need to know about God is here. You can sit, dive into His Word, find out what He thinks. His Bible represents Him, represents Jesus. You can know everything about Him. You can talk to Him. Jesus provided that gateway where you can actually talk to God. Tell Him your concerns. Ask Him questions. Tell Him what you're ticked off about. Tell Him what you're happy about. Building a relationship like you would with a friend. You know, if this is worth something, if anything is worth anything to you, it will cost you something. And I'm so glad that when Jesus was going to the cross, when He was buying back everything that we are, when He was paying the price so that we can be restored with God, I'm glad Jesus was not one of those comfort Christians. I'm glad he wasn't asking for a discount. I'm glad he wasn't trying to find a cheaper, easier way out. Jesus went the full way, and he did that so that we can continue to go the full way with him. And wherever you are at, I want you to know that Jesus never cheaped out on you because you are so valuable to him. And your life, the life that you are living right now, can be the best that you can ever imagine. It can be greater than you can ever even hope for, as the scripture says, when you build a relationship with God. So let's not stop as believers at salvation and say, thank you, Jesus, that, we, that you have guaranteed me salvation in heaven. That's beautiful. That is amazing. That is awesome. But let's take the next step and pursue a relationship with him. You see, in John, the whole gospel of John, it's a really interesting book how he writes it. The whole premise of John, the Gospel of John, is around love. It's around the relationship with God. He talks about forgiveness and salvation, all these beautiful things. But those things should propel us into relationship with God. And my goal and my, my heart and my prayer is for you is that you are propelled into a relationship with God where you know him, you stand on his word, so that when storms hit, when anything hits you, is that you know what God says about it. You know what the beautiful thing is? It says that the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy. That can be our life. So when storms hit, when they come at us, it doesn't shake us, it doesn't slow us down, it doesn't knock us over, it doesn't take away our righteousness, it doesn't take away our peace, it doesn't take away our joy. Did you notice that in the Bible, 
every time a storm came up, the only thing that storms listened to is the word of God. The only time. So us as Christians, let's get to know God, let's pursue him, and let's use God's word. And out of that trust factor, you will see amazing freedom in your life so you can experience the kingdom of heaven right now on earth. It's not just some fanciful thing down the road. It is right now. Sozo quality of life is yours through Jesus. And let's build that trust where we actually believe it so. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you for this word. Help it get into our hearts. Help it get into our minds. We want to pursue you. We want a relationship with you, an actual relationship. Not just stopping at a choice of believing what you've done, but we want to build a relationship to know you, to know your word, to know what you stand for, to know your thoughts and opinions. Holy Spirit, guide us and lead us. In Jesus' name. And wherever you're watching, if you don't have a relationship with God, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, and you're wondering, I don't have this beginning point that you've talked about, just simply repeat after me, Right now, we're going to do a quick prayer. Because you're choosing to pray with me and you're confessing with your mouth, you automatically qualify yourself for a kingdom, to be in God's kingdom and, and the salvation that Jesus has for us. So repeat after me. Dear God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross. Today, I choose to follow you. Today, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. And I give you my heart for the rest of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. That's so awesome. I'm so pumped for you. If you made that prayer, if you just said that right now, you just entered into the kingdom of heaven. You just took the first step into knowing Jesus and having that salvation and heaven guaranteed to you. But now don't stop there. Get to know God. Dive into his word. I promise you, your life will change when you build that trust with God. I love you guys. I'm so glad to be able to connect with you this evening. Keep tuning in every single Wednesday and every single Sunday for our online church services. The Word of God will continue to be brought to you every single week, and I trust it's going to help you in your walk. Love you. Have an awesome week. See you guys later. Thanks so much for watching today. We pray the Word gets into your heart, changes your life, that things go amazing with Jesus because they do. God bless.